Lord, we pray that as we consider your word, that you would guide us into those parts of it that are particularly relevant to each one of us. That, Lord, you would speak your words and that we would hear and take action where you are prompting. Because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want this morning to take the subject called Anchored in Christ. And for that, we'll be looking at uh, a fair chunk of Acts chapter 27. But I wonder, have you ever cried out for help and then realised that whatever help came, it just wouldn't be enough? Knowing God's power and our freedom in Christ means that we can get help in whatever situation we face. And that's something that Paul knew very well. I think Paul's great. He's one of those true biblical heroes. We're grateful to Paul for writing most of our New Testament. I don't know whether you've counted, but of those I am statements that we learned in Freedom in Christ, 25 of the 33 come from Paul's writing. And we're taking each one of those one by one in our daily thoughts at round about midday. Paul had been fearless in his opposition to Jesus, and he'd caused many to suffer. He's even more fearless in his proclamation of the gospel after he became a Christian. Those who had supported him as he opposed Christianity had turned on him. His faith and obedience to Jesus had placed him in great personal danger. His life was at stake. And that was true on more than one occasion. But his faith remained strong and he was a great example to many. The religious leaders had persuaded the Roman authorities that Paul was a danger. And towards the end of Acts, we read how Paul was under arrest and had insisted on going to face the music, or at least the Emperor of Rome. Though he could have been released by Festus and then by Agrippa, Paul knew that he had a mission to fulfil. He wanted to tell the truth and share his faith. His journey to Rome was essential, but his insistence on facing Caesar would mean a long and dangerous journey. His journey was under heavy guard and by sea. The wooden ship was far from being a cruise liner. It was probably some form of freighter calling at coastal ports before going out into the open sea. And we pick up the story in Acts 27 and verse 13. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought they'd obtained what they wanted. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore to Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called a northeaster came and swept round the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind, so we gave way to it and were driven along. As we passed the lee of a small island called Corda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. When the men had hoisted it aboard, they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together, fearing that they would run aground on the sandbars of Citrus. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that next day, they began to throw the cargo overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raising, raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. They were desperate. After the men had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, 
Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have been spared yourselves this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night an angel of God whose I sorry, last night an angel of the God whose I am and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as you just as he has told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. On the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adriatic Sea when, around midnight, the sailors sensed that they were approaching land. They took soundings and found that the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found that it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that we would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending that they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it fall away. Well, Paul's journey to Rome was long and uncomfortable. Having set off, they encountered strong headwinds. After a lull, they set off again and soon they encountered a storm. In fact, more than a storm, it was a hurricane. The danger was clear. So the sailors took the precaution of passing ropes around the vessel to try and bind it together. Next day, things were no better, so they threw the cargo overboard at great loss to the owners. In the chaos of the storm, they seemed without hope. They threw all the ship's equipment overboard. All prospects of being saved seemed to have gone after several days of not being able to see the sun all the stars. The desperate men feared for their lives. All that is apart from one, Paul. How could Paul be so positive at this difficult time? Well, God had made a promise that Paul would stand before Caesar. And we find the answer in verse 25, which in the New King James Version tells us, Therefore take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as he has told me. Notice that Paul didn't say he believed in God, but that he believed God. Maybe some of the crew or other prisoners believed in God, but Paul believed God. Many will say today that they believe in God, but it's a very different thing to say that we believe God or as the New International Version that we read earlier, translates it to have faith in God. Paul not only had faith, but absolutely demonstrated his belief and stood up to speak words of encouragement to the crew and the other prisoners on board. They needed hope. After being battered for 14 days and nights, the ship was approaching land. They didn't know which bit of land but any bit of land would be good, hence the saying, any port at a storm. But they didn't have a port. They planned simply to run ashore. And whatever that meant for the ship, that was okay. So as they approached the shore, verse 29 of our passage tells us that four anchors were dropped. Presumably, one, two from the port and starboard, two fore and two aft, one in each corner to stabilise the ship. Yeah. 
Paul, the other prisoners, the guard and the crew were certainly tossed in a storm, tossed around by one of life's storms. They needed stability to return. They had physical anchors, but they could also have spiritual anchors. We used to sing a hymn when I was in the Boys Brigade. Um, the one I'm referring to starts, Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? And Priscilla Owens, who wrote it, undoubtedly wrote it with our passage from Acts 27 in mind. I wonder, do you feel tossed around in some sort of a storm? Do you need a bit of stability? I'd like to suggest four anchors that we can use to stabilise our lives. Our first anchor is that we can trust in God's presence. An angel of the Lord came to Paul in his time of intense crisis. Paul sent the angel to reassure him and to give him instructions. And Paul was wise enough to obey God's messenger. Now we don't often see angels but we do have the presence of the Holy Spirit who is the fulfillment of Jesus's promise in Matthew 28 verse 20. Surely I am with you always. We recall that same promise to Jacob and to Moses and Joshua, all of those in the Old Testament, of course, each experienced the very presence of God. They trusted God and they saw great things happen. We are secure in Christ because the Holy Spirit is always with us. Unless that is, we reject him. Now, I've known the presence of God on many occasions, but I bring to mind those 33 days of my radiotherapy. Nurses helped me to get onto the table. They checked my identity and then left the room. I was on my own with this big machine. I was fed into it before the radiation was blasted at me. So I then inched forward into the machine. It was a real reassurance to know and feel the presence of God with me with every rotation of the beam and every nudge forward. I could trust God. A second anchor then is trusting in God's promises. I find the right slide. That's the one. Do you have experience of people promising you something and let, then letting you down. It's hard, isn't it, to be able to trust them again. I think it's wonderful that God is one who we can totally trust, even though it may take time for our trust to develop. Paul had learned many things in his walk with God and had found that he could rely on God's promises. In this example, God had told Paul that he would stand before Caesar. Paul trusted the promise and all turned out well, despite the dire circumstances that they faced. But the promise was not just for Paul. It was a literal lifeline to all those that he was with. God promised that no lives will be lost. The others were blessed because Paul trusted God do you trust God's promises in your life? Can you be a blessing to others? I'm going to try and play you some music. God had not promised skies always blue.
so we can trust in God's promises. A third anchor is that we can trust in God's plan. Verse 24 says, You will make it safely to Rome and stand trial before Caesar. That was God's plan. And Paul could trust that God would carry it out. I'm sure you're aware of that familiar strip scripture in Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future not only plans but very positive plans do you know I find that very encouraging you can trust in him for them to be fulfilled so if, you, if so, your trust in his plans can be a stabilising anchor in your life. Fourth anchor is that we can trust in God's power. There's an amazing outcome, which is beyond the verses that we read. We jump ahead to the end of the chapter. We read how many swam ashore but in verse 44 it says the rest were to get there on planks or on pieces of ship in this way everyone reached land in safety all 276 reached land safely and that's proof that the anchors of being able to trust in God's presence his plan and his promise were sound with God, all things are possible. He calmed the storm on the Sea of Galilee as a demonstration of his power over nature. In Acts, God saved the entire crew as a demonstration of his power over circumstances. Now, I haven't calmed any storms, but I have been privileged to see God's power at work in, over the enemy in various situations as I've exercised my faith and the gifts of the Holy Spirit as he's graciously given me and many of you would share that experience. So what circumstances do you face today? Remember, nothing is impossible for God. He has all the power we need and passes that power to us through the Holy Spirit. Those four anchors, you would have thought, should have been enough. But notice that there were doubters. Verse 17. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let down the lifeboat into the sea and pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. The lifeboat had already been lifted clear of the sea for safety. But you know, they wanted to lower it. The action was futile. The ropes of the lifeboat were cut. There was no alternative than trusting in God. Many of these days live in the futile hope that they know better than God. They try to do their own thing in their own strength. So where do you fit in this passage? There's no doubt that many are going through difficult times. Many have lost family members or close friends. Many are concerned for loved ones, for education, for jobs, for finances, for the future, etc. Many are concerned over health issues. There's certainly a storm going on. But how are you coping? I encourage you through this passage to use the anchors that I've described to stabilise your life. The anchor of God's promises, his presence, his plan and his power. May we all resort to enjoying God's presence, keeping God's plans trusting in his presence, his promises, 
and experiencing his power through the Holy Spirit. I just have to say, because I can't stop myself, um, we have so many storms in our lives, you know, that we that other people think, how on earth did that person get through it? If we can just show them it's through our faith that sorts that that gets us through each and every situation. If we can cling to the rock of our, you know, to the anchor, which is God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, that we will get through all things. But as people look on, maybe be upbeat knowing that God's gonna do it and not believe he's not gonna do it. I think it's having faith that can move mountains. It works wonders. It is awesome. You know, Please see it just through. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay, so as we close, I was thinking about anchors and that hymn that I mentioned earlier. And there's a chap with a wonderful dog collar who will appear on your screen in a moment. I'm just going to mute everybody. Let's share the screen. And uh, you may or may not know the hymn, but it's copyright free, so uh, we're going to go for it. Say it out.
thank you that we have you and that we can trust you. Lord, help us as we go into this week to have our souls and our lives anchored in the one who is fully trustworthy, the one who is totally powerful, the one whose presence we asked for at the beginning of the service and we know is with us by the Holy Spirit in our lives. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Saviour be glory and majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages now and forevermore.